There are many different types of fetish fluids and a lot of different fetishes and kinks that have to do with fluids, but a, uh, a really common one that uh, sometimes people don't think of as being a fluid necessarily, but it's blood play. Hematolognia is an interest in using blood in sexual play, and I may have butchered that word. I apologize. For some, the intimate connection between blood and intercourse is very sexually stirring. The smell, sight, and texture of blood may be arousing, too. Uh, your blood is made up of liquid and solids. The liquid part, called plasma, is made of water, salts, and protein. And over half of your blood is plasma, and the solid part of your blood contains red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. I am Primal Piggy. You can find me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy, all one word. I'm also the admin, or one of the admins, of a rather large Facebook page called Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape. You can find that on Facebook at WCDT BDSM. Thank you for listening to another podcast of BDSM United. You can find us on the web at www.bdsmunited.com. And if you're listening on your favorite platform, be sure to leave a review uh, so that people can know what you do or don't like about our podcast. Uh, Red blood cells deliver oxygen from your lungs to your tissues and organs, and white blood cells fight infection and are part of your immune system. Platelets help blood to clot when you have a cut or a wound. Uh, blood cells constantly die, and your body makes new ones. Uh, bone marrow, the spongy material inside your bones, makes new blood cells. Uh, there are numerous fetishes that deal with blood. Uh, most of them are considered edge play. Um, that, those are BDSM activities that are considered especially risky or on the edge of what might be considered safe. The definition of edge play is really subjective, and it can differ from scene to scene and from individual to individual. So some people may uh, call some things edge play where others may not. Uh, when playing with blood and the types of fetishes where blood's involved, we really encourage you to take extra care in being risk aware. We also want to give you the advice that you should seek a medical professional. Uh, you should talk to them about uh, how they deal with blood and how they mitigate the risk of blood. And you also want to talk with a medical professional before dealing with blood uh, because you may have a medical condition. You may be on medications that may be uh, may make you bleed more or may... Um, just may make blood play un especially unsafe for you. Um, the different fetishes that include blood play are cutting, knife play, needle play, anything to do with hooks and piercing, uh, suspension, uh, period sex, wearing blood, primal biting, primal scratching, or drinking blood, just to name a few. Um, and let's first, since we're being risk aware, um, let's talk about some of the safety considerations when dealing with blood. Uh, number one, be careful where you cut. Uh, some people are turned on by blood around the genitals or on the breasts. For others, where the blood comes from isn't really of any particular interest as long as there's blood. Of course, cutting or slicing into the skin can be dangerous. Vital blood vessels and arteries sit just millimeters below the skin's surface. Without proper training, you could open one of these vital vessels, creating an injury that could quickly become life-threatening. Avoid the neck, the groin, the upper arms, the joints, and the armpits. These areas of the body are more prone to bleeding and fatal injury. The best or safest area to cut include the forearms, the thighs, the back of the leg, and the buttocks. These meteor areas don't have major veins or arteries. Number two, seek out training 
Many elements of blood play can be dangerous if you aren't properly trained. Some BDSM communities offer hands-on training or instruction. You may even talk to a healthcare professional that specializes in this area about this interest and how you can learn safety. Uh, number three, get tested. Inevitably, you or your partner will share blood during blood play. Blood can carry many viral infections and diseases, so it's important that you and your partner know your STI status before engaging in this activity so that you can make informed decisions. Number four, sterilize the cutting instruments and clean the cut sites. Uh, boil or steam any instruments you plan to use. You can also purchase pre-sterilized, individually packaged scalpels or surgical blades um, and needles from medical supply stores. When you've selected a site to cut, you can clean the skin with an alcohol swab to reduce bacteria that could get into the wound once it's open. And then number five, clean up wounds. After blood play is finished, be sure to carefully clean each cut with warm water and soap. Apply an antibacterial ointment and cover the cut with a bandage to keep dirt and bacteria away. Replace the bandage daily until the cut is fully healed. Number six, Blood play isn't safe for everyone. You should avoid blood play if you're taking prescription blood thinners or have a clotting disorder. People who have a history of cutting or self-harm may also want to avoid blood play and knife play. These two fetishes could be triggering or could affect your mental health, not just your physical health. Number seven, you can simulate blood play. Uh, you can also use liquids that just mimic the look, such as red wine, ketchup, strawberry sauce, or even chocolate sauce. Let your imagination and creativity run wild. Number eight, be certain you really, 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 really trust your partner. I think I stressed that just enough. Maybe we'll add a few more reallys in there. Make sure you trust your partner. Be certain of it. Having a knife around inherently increases the risk for accidental cuts or inju inju injuries, even when purposeful cutting could be too deep. Uh, that could lead to heavy bleeding, which can be life-threatening. The risk of infection is also high with cutting. Anytime the skin is open, purposeful or not, bacteria can find its way in. Blood also carries a number of infections and viruses itself. Swapping blood increases your risk for contracting any illness your partner has and vice versa. So be certain that you can trust your partner. Be careful. Make sure you've done the proper vetting, the proper negotiations, and the proper safety before blood play. Uh, don't skip over vetting or negotiations, as some do. So blood and sex play are primal elements of human nature. Uh, for some people, seeing blood or using blood during sex speaks to them on a very deeply personal level. For others, the blood's red color is alluring. Red, which is commonly associated with love and lust, may draw feelings of passion and desire. Some like sexual play elements that have some masochistic elements to it. They find pleasure in the pain of being cut. Uh, some people also find that putting an incredible amount of trust in a partner, such as uh, cutting or blood play, builds a deep and a meaningful connection. So as we continue looking at this fetish fluid of blood, let's talk a little bit about those who like to taste or drink it. Some are called sanguinarians. They crave blood as a life force. Some are lifestyle vampires, and others just enjoy the fetish for aesthetic reasons. If this is your fetish, regardless of why you drink blood, let's look at some of the risks that are involved. So blood is processed by the body the same as water. Into the stomach, into the small intestine, then into the bloodstream. 
But unlike, say, vampire bats, uh, human bodies don't have the right mechanisms to digest blood. So swallowing copious amounts of blood could hurt your stomach and may cause vomiting. It may be, dis- it may be safe to drink blood in small amounts, assuming the blood is disease-free. But drinking more than, say, a couple of teaspoons puts you in the danger zone because healthy human blood is also very rich in iron. Our bodies have a hard time getting rid of excess iron. So if you drink more than what you might consume when eating a raw steak, for instance, you're at risk for iron overload. This condition is called hemochromatosis. I think I got that right. Reaching this level of toxicity can increase your risk of developing other life-threatening disorders, including heart disease, liver disease, and diabetes. That, um, that's because the excess iron is stored in your liver or in your heart or your pancreas and leading to all kinds of health problems. So, Drinking animal blood is generally safe in small quantities as well. Uh, Chowing down on a rare steak or a blood sausage link usually won't have any ill effects, but ingesting animal blood in large quantities could also be dangerous, especially if the blood wasn't collected in a hygienic way. Animal uh, blood is prone to bacterial growth, and that excess iron intake is also possible. Um, If your fetish is tasting or drinking the blood of a partner, Make sure you always obtain consent from your donor, along with their health records, proving they don't have any illness, or at least that you're aware of any illness. Routine screening for STI is key to make sure everyone is healthy and safe and well-informed. Don't literally take a bite out of yourself or your donor. Biting to that degree isn't safe or hygienic. Anything that you use to lacerate the skin should be sterilized using boiling water. Your mouth must be clean if you plan to drink directly from the skin. This means a thorough brushing, flossing, and mouthwash rinse. If you don't do this, you're more likely to spread bacteria or other pathogens pathogens between your mouth and the wound. Afterwards, wash the laceration with antibacterial Soap and warm water. Apply an antibiotic ointment and cover the area with a bandage and repeat daily with that bandage until it's healed. So, overall, blood is a really fun fetish for those who enjoy its look, maybe its coppery taste. Uh, As with other types of edge play, if blood play is a fetish you're interested in or already enjoy, just be sure that you're risk aware. We always like that motto of RAC, risk aware, consensual kink. Or it's risk aware because you're aware of the risks that are involved and you take into account the safety of not just the tools involved, but also the techniques involved. And it's consensual. Consent is a hallmark of BDSM. It, it uh, It is fries. It's freely given. It's reversible. Uh, It's informed. Consent is enthusiastic. And consent is specific. So make sure you specifically get consent to do blood play. Just because you have consent to do other fetishes may not be a, a blood, may be a boundary and or a limit whether soft or hard, of the person involved. And make sure it's a kink. Make sure you have fun. Make sure it's going to be fun for everyone involved and fun for those who are present but not involved in the scene itself. That's what it means to be rack, to be risk-aware, consensual kink. You've been listening to another episode of BDSM United. I'm Primal Piggy. You can follow me on Facebook at The Primal Piggy or at Whips, Chains, and Duct Tape at WCDT BDSM, also on Facebook. You can find us on the web at www.bdsmunited.com. 
Uh, be sure you check out our BDSM education group. Some of these educational materials in my notes today come from things that we've posted there on uh, BDSM education group. It's about 1,200 people, uh, and they're all learning in a private safe, sp safe space. They're all learning uh, about how to incorporate kink and how to incorporate power exchange uh, into their daily lives. Thanks for listening.